hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back today's video I'm filming on Chilton Street again I was here last week when I was recommending the only two physical stores remaining in London that retail large sized women's footwear and having spent two days on the street I not only fell in love with the street but the immediate surrounding area the vibe the beauty but more so the sense of camaraderie was just so beautiful to witness and to also be a part of and I thought why don't I do something similar to what I did on Mount Street and just walk you through the street and talk you through the restaurant the hotel the pubs the stores and the residential developments further down and help you see why it's been voted London's coolest street I'm Anissi Sagonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate mid-lux or super brands that are a little under the radar but still heavily weighted on quality. Mount Street and Chilton Street are very different in terms of their look and feel. Mount Street's more your elegant historic village, whereas Chilton Street, think of a market town, a village in the shires, Oxfordshire for example, best example is Chipping Norton, an area with an abundance of independent stores like Chilton Street, your pubs, cafes, restaurants like Chilton Street, and it has an incredibly upwardly mobile cachet of residents like Chilton Street. Chilton Street has that edge in terms of just the sense of camaraderie. People typically live in this area as opposed to buying a property they just let out and, or come and spend a limited amount of time during the year. And they have a, a quite involved residents association that organizes a lot of social events that most residents get involved in. And they have cafes that are more your community centers where residents will come pretty much every day or a number of times a week to just socialize and catch up with the other residents. I'm going to kick off with the establishment just behind me to my right, the Chilton Firehouse and Boutique Hotel. I'm going to kick off with the Chilton Firehouse Hotel and Restaurant, which is just behind the taxi. It's part of Andre Ballas's group of hotels. He has the Chateau Maman in LA, which was a very sleepy, dusty hotel, which he turned around. And then he has the Mercer and the Sunset Beach in New York. And he pretty much transplanted all of the goodness, everything that worked, and opened the Chilton Firehouse. Um, used to be a fire station. They've kept all of the original features. And it really stands out more so in the rooms when you see all the bells and the stone, the wood paneling and so forth. But through the courtyard, you have an amazing green area for our fresco dining, for drinks in the summer and the winter. Winter, you get blankets, you get the overhead heaters. Closes at 9 p.m., so it means anybody who has a room overlooking the courtyard, there's virtually no noise after 9. And then you have the firehouse hotel, and then you also have the restaurant and the bar. You need a reservation for the restaurant and the bar. Food is amazing. Service is incredibly discreet but attentive. And the hotel has 26 rooms. Entry level, your classic, 650 a night, going up to about 1200 for a suite, but that doesn't include the penthouse. But it's a great place for staycations. I would highly recommend it. Even if you live in London, just get away from it all. You come here, it's a beautiful space. The bedrooms are all in white linen. They have the wood paneling, they have the velvet chairs. Simply decorated, but it's just very homely, very tasteful. Um, a lot of brown, but very, very nice. And you just relax here with great service, fantastic food, and just shut out all the drama of the pandemic going on right now. But it's a great place just for service at the very top end. It's exemplary. Um, everything about it comes together very well and it's right in the center of London you wouldn't you wouldn't think it at all and then moving across to the other side of the street I'm going to start right at the top of the street with Tasty Corner it's a calf come oriental style restaurant it's run by a Chinese couple and they offer your full English breakfast your bacon and egg baps in the morning and then in the afternoon you can come back for one of their numerous oriental style specials great place for lunch on the go I tend to come here maybe two three times a month for a quick omelette before my next appointment and then in front of me is a society a key holding company and then the gallery in front of me for as long as I've been coming for the last couple of weeks, there's been a lot of 
artwork and furniture coming and going so I'm not too sure if they're opened or they're opening or um, what's happening but they have some interesting pieces actually so it's worth keeping an eye out if you're an art enthusiast for what's going to happen and then in front of me is the most extraordinary and sophisticated news agent you'll ever find in London. It's owned by the gentleman in front with the mask Sandeep and it offers a uniquely curated selection of international publications, um, either limited edition, one-off or one of everything so you have that exclusive element. And covering a range of subjects from art to design, photography, men's lifestyle and menswear, you have women's wear, you have food and wine, travel, home and garden, your Vogue and Al International editions. And then of course anything else of interest he will order for you. They are collaborating over the next month with a number of art fairs and festivals. With art not happening because of the pandemic, they're going to be offering a range of books and magazines that will cover a good number of the art pieces that would have been exhibited at at the freeze and they are also working with Montclair and if you come in with an item of clothing you'll get access to one of the exclusive art focused magazines the food and why you get food uh, which is from Le Comptoir Jean Robichon or rather it's Le Comptoir Robichon and it's a diner come restaurant that was opened on Piccadilly last year in tribute to Jean Robichon he was the most decorated or the most Michelin starred restaurant um, chef in the world 32 and he had restaurants in 13 countries food is amazing there's freshly made pastries you have your quiches and then there's a barista gentleman in the corner he always has young really intelligent fun um, young people who work for him as baristas and they serve the food and just chat to the customers it's very much a community center like i mentioned a lot of the locals will come here at some point order their magazines or just come here to catch up and chat with friends and the neighbors and have really great pastries read a magazine you've just bought there and just watch the world go by and then next to them is Trunk, and Trunk is a menswear store that offers a range of English and Japanese brands. This street, I must add, um, is very heavy on menswear. And then in front of me is Cox and Power, a fine jewelry store. And then next to them is Jazz Musicals. And then next to them is Anatomy, um, London Apothecary, and then Monocle, another great place to actually work for coffee, cakes, just watch the world go by. I really like the cakes in here actually, so it's a really fun spot, all freshly made. And then next to them is the Bridal uh, Rogue Gallery. And then before I switch over to the other side, uh, Bati Vias, she is one of the most well-known and respected naturally, natural beauty gurus in London. I first noticed her when Cherie Blair mentioned her. She loved her and used to use her a lot and would talk about her rightly so and that's how she came onto my radar and then next to them is Caden Heads the oldest independent uh, Scottish bottler and then I'm going to switch over to the other side and, and I'm going to talk about a couple of stores in quite a bit of detail I'm going to be talking about two stores in the background Casely Hayford and Grey Flannel but I'm going to kick off with Casely Hayford in 2008, the Black Power List named the Casely Hayford family the most influential black family in the United Kingdom. From the grandparents to the parents, the children, the grandchildren, they've all been hugely successful and accomplished in their respective areas of expertise. But today I'm only going to focus on two family members, Joe and his son Charlie. Joe was one of the greatest British fashion designers. He was an incredibly stylish man, softly spoken, humble, and hugely talented. He was the first black British directional designer, very much focused on modern tailoring. And directional designing, think along the lines of Comme de Garçon, you have Margiela, the brands that are the trendsetters. They set the trend in, ter in terms of the pace, the tone, the style, the colors, everything that's happening in the industry. And Joe was one of the front runners and then about 10 years ago he went into partnership with his son Charlie and they created the Casely Hayford menswear brand which is very much focused on your easy elegant suiting your sporty take on classic menswear 
But unfortunately, Joe died uh, last year in January. But Charlie's carried on the business literally with no blips. And for the last couple of years, has been designing the collection on his own. But it continues to just grow from strength to strength. And then moving on to my next store, Grey Flannel. Grey Flannel, together with the music store a little further down, are the longest standing stores on the street. They've been open for over 40 years. And during the pandemic, Grey Flannel came under new management. And going forward, they'll be rebranded and known as Grey Flannel by Timothy Everest. And Timothy is the most unassuming tailor you will ever meet. Always incredibly well put together. He can never put a fashion foot wrong, but what you expect from a tailor, right? But he just makes it look so effortless. He has worked with the good and the great from the theater, the arts, the music world, Alton John, George Michael, Mick Jagger, the Beatles, the last five James Bond movies, Mission Impossible. The list is endless. And he's very much focused on your casual elegance. Think of your very well made, your bespoke casual pieces. And he's part of what's called the new bespoke movement and it's a movement that was created in the 90s together with two other Beermouth tailors Oswald Botang and Richard James and they created it as an in an attempt to take away the stuffiness that was associated with traditional Savile Row tailoring and they wanted to make it a lot more approachable a lot more fun and they created contemporary silhouettes with bolder fabrics and they're very much focused on two key elements, the design and the individuality. Design in terms of well-made pieces, um, the color, the attention to detail, really bold fabrics, um, and coupled with just the individual element pieces that the wearer looked very well put together. They looked good and they, they could work as part of a whole wardrobe. They pretty much styled the wearer. And Timothy is somebody who, People come to him because of word of mouth, because he's just the easiest person to deal with. He gets to know you and understand your needs, your lifestyle, and just how to create the perfect outfit for you. Tim's moved into a great space in front of the right audience. I'm really excited to see what's next for Tim. And then moving on to my next store, in between Casely, Hayford and Grey Flannel, there's an Italian store called Velasca, a shoe store. And then I'm gonna carry on walking down. And then next to grey flannel is Sunspell. Sunspell started off many years ago with just lingerie, but they've since extended their range to include uh, men's and women's wear. And then next to them is S Zone. S Zone is one of two, one of only two actually, women's wear stores on this street. S Zone is very much focused on the sustainable element of development and creation. And then flipping over onto the other side, uh, I left off at Caden Heads. Uh, next to Caden Heads is Crispin's Shoes, and Crispin's Shoes, together with Magnus, which is a few doors down, I have a separate video I will release after this video where I was talking about um, the only two physical stores left in London that retail large-sized women's footwear. Next to them is Room 32, a hairdresser's. There's another one a little further down on the left, and then Trunk Labs, which is linked to the trunk further down. Next to them is Saya Trudon. It's the oldest wax company in the world started in 1643 and they produce table and scented, scented candles. They currently have an amazing collaboration with Balman at the moment and the collaboration is their most popular uh, scent, uh, Ernesto, and they've done a variation of that for their Balman Trudon. Great range of ca candles, fantastic as Christmas presents. And then next to them, but I doubt they'll make it to Christmas actually, they're selling out fast. I remember last week they only had one candle left. Next to them is Quill, a stationery store, and then Yo Town, closed down. Next to them is Magnus, who I mentioned with Crispin's Shoes. And then next to them is John Simons. John Simons, I'll actually be back in a few weeks. They do a number of different menswear items. So clothing, you have accessories, belts, hats, and things like that. Great as Christmas presents, so watch out for that video. Next to them is White Rose and then Sabre. Sabre are an amazing store in terms of producing really nice, I think they actually handmade uh, slippers um, in a range of colors, very comfortable slippers. Um, for the house. I love those. 
I'm going to talk about those when I talk about my luxury men's pajamas and then I'm going to flip back onto the other side Chilton Street Delhi another popular residential place for the locals uh, Mukimon and then Howarth uh, wind, uh, woodwind specialists I mentioned them with um, grey flannel being the, old, the st uh, stores that have been around the longest and then in front of me is a gentleman who works for John Simons we'll see him when I record their, their specific video and then Hamilton Hair Hamilton Hair do men's clothes I'll also talk about them in a little more detail in another video. My next video is actually about luxury men's wear, men's pyjamas, and in particular, winter pyjamas. They are great for cotton pyjamas, and I'm going to talk about them in a lot more detail. So that's Hamilton's. Next to them is Atlas Gallery, a photography gallery. And then I'm just going to backtrack a bit. Next to Seba, there's Chilton Nature Beauty and then next to them is Prism. Prism is a great store. They do swimwear, sportswear and underwear all in one. So you can wear it as you choose in any one of those three options. Really well made, nice colours, great fit. Next to them is Cromford. And Cromford I cannot recommend highly enough for your bespoke and ready-to-wear leather pieces. They work with aniline leather. I'm going to include a video I, I created a few weeks ago just talking about how to care for leather at the top end of the market. But if you want a really well-made jacket in terms of the craftsmanship ship, and also phenomenal quality hide, then don't look any further than Cromford. Next to them is English Cut. And then... Um, West One, the Artisans of Aesthetics. I'm sure they're into home renovations or something like that. And then I'm going to flip over onto the other side as I walk down. In front of me is one of the best estate agents in London, and I don't say this lightly, Rockstone. And Rockstone is owned by one of the most formidable real estate entrepreneurs, Becky Fatemi. And any major property deal in this side of town, so whether it's Marlebone and the immediate surrounding areas, you have Mayfair, you have Knightsbridge, St. John's Wood, going down to Kensington and um, Holland Park. Rockstone will be involved or they know about it. It is owned, as I said, by Becky Fatemi. And she started her real estate career at um, Foxtons, rose to sales director, and her boss encouraged her to start her own business as she was underestimating her own greatness. I mean, how about that for a compliment? And I've been in this estate agents a number of times, maybe a handful of times. And every time I've been, she's always there. And I always leave with such a pep in my step because she's just so warm, incredibly friendly. But her drive and tenacity are just infectious. So that's Rockstone. And then next to them, mm, what's going on here? Ah, it's a lot of rubble. I guess there's major renovations going on around here. And then next to them is Globe Apartments, another estate agent. Next to them, Bill Curie, hairdressers. And then Bella Freud, the second women's wear store on this street. Bella Freud um, is a d British designer and her clothes are very much focused around the 1970 logo. So she has t-shirts and jumpers with 1970 written on them. And 1970 is a year in which she had a really good time. She liked it. She has very fond memories of that period in time. She was incredibly happy. And um, her fashion is very much focused around that year. Really easy to wear, simple, straightforward pieces. You can see the cushion and I think the jumpers on the wall. Let me see if I can get a better picture of the jumpers on the wall. There you go. So that's Bella Freud, and then next to that, an uh, apartment block, and then A and D Gallery. Oh, look at their list of artists—a very well-appointed list. David Hockney's there. There's um, who else do I recognise? I remember seeing a couple of other names: Andy Warhol, Tom Wesselman is there, and then there's Murakami, Fakashi, Jeff Koons is on there. Wow, a very well-appointed list. And then next to them is Webster's, a hardware store, and then Eurocave. Eurocave I really like, and I want to explore this brand a little more in a little more detail. Eurocave is very much focused on residential and commercial refrigeration. I like brands like this because when they're focused on one thing, they're experts and they produce that particular item very well to a very high standard. 
then Dr. Medispa, a Roma, a beauty place, and then a restaurant, Il Blandford's, and then next to that a coffee shop, the Temple of Coffee. Uh, before we hit the corner, I'm just going to flip around. In front of me is Wolf and Lamb. It's a vegan restaurant and it's directly below Chilton Place, an Uberlux residential development. I remember a few years ago seeing several apartments being advertised for sale in Rockstone. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were involved um, in quite a few of the sales. And then directly opposite Chilton Place is the development I mentioned at the beginning of the street, the Chilterns. So that's the Chilterns. And then what you have, um, just in between, I wonder if I'll be able to see, if you'll be able to see this. But there's a door just in front of us, BXR. And BXR is one of a handful of gyms in London that are very much at the very top end of the market and they specialize in one particular area so whether it's high intensity interval training boxing or yoga they're focused on that particular exercise okay, but they also okay. have cardio and other exercises included but the classes are expensive the gyms are very well put together aesthetically the equipment the trainers are of the highest standard it's a great package it's expensive you get what you pay for and they tend to be in the residential developments where obviously people can afford them afford them but BXI is part owned by Anthony Joshua. So when you go in, you see a lot of his pictures, signed pictures, boxing gloves and so forth. Um, but it's a great gym, BXI. If you like boxing combined with cardio, they also do other classes. Um, it's a great place to sign up. And then this is the lower part of the street. Um, to the left, it's largely residential. In front of us, number 83, is a hotel. Um, it's called Holmes Place, I think. Holmes Hotel, sorry, Holmes Hotel. And then to the right is another hotel called the Blandford Hotel. And then the rest of the street is two blocks opposite each other, two big buildings opposite each other, all red brick fronted, and those are all residential. And then directly in front of me is Baker Street Station. I don't know what the offices are above the station. Uh, sorry, it is actually residential, come to think of it, I'd forgotten. There's a lot of um, apartments in that block. And then underneath is Baker Street uh, Tube Station and the train station. Um, so that's Chilton Street. Um, and that's the view all the way back up towards Oxford Street, so westbound. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Chilton Street in all its glory. If you have any further questions, do let me know as always in the comments down below. But as always, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.